Thank you for tuning in to Sherry Sue's videos. On today's video, I'm going to do a Where Are They Now on the actress Sonya Wilde. Sonya Wilde is most known for the 1960 movie, I Passed His Way. Now this movie is a tragic mulatto movie. And there were a lot of movies made like this during the 30s, 40s, and 50s. Now Sonya Wilde is a biracial woman. She's she's mixed with multiple different races. She's one of her parents is biracial with Indian and black, and then her one of her other parents is fully white. So she's mixed with multiple different races. And she plays the character of a light-skinned black woman who's passing for white because she feels that it's much easier to pass as a white woman in 1960s America. I tried to pretend that it was only the novelty of going out with a nice white boy, but I forgot that right away, that I was Negro and he was white. It all seemed so natural, like it was meant to be. I, I just didn't think of it anymore. Starring Sonia Wilde and James Franciscus in the picture that will make them the most talked about young players of the year. She's not natural. She's like a cat in a strange attic. Tell me about the baby. Well, everything went well, Mrs. Layton. I'll get the doctor and he But the baby, is it black? So the character that she's playing in this movie kind of simulates how she lived her life during the 1960s. Because she lived her life as a white woman even though she wasn't fully white. So in this movie, it's kind of like art imitating reality. Now, if you want to see I Passed as White, and you want to see the full movie, it's right here on YouTube. I'm going to leave the link in the description box for any person that wants to watch the full movie. Now, I'm a huge fan of classic movies. And I really liked I Passed as White. I was surprised at how much I liked this movie. Now, I don't think this movie is as good as Imitation of Life or Pinky, but it's, it's a pretty decent movie. The acting is good. The storyline is really good. Sonya Wilde was born on November 2nd, 1937 in North Carolina to a biracial mother and a European father. She started acting in the late 1950s when she appears on the Broadway show, The West Side Story. She was one of the original cast members on The West Side Story. And as you all know, The West Side Story went on to be one of the fam most famous movies of all time. She only appears on the Broadway show. She doesn't appear in the movie, which came out in the early 1960s. Now, she got the role in I Pass His White in 1960. And when the movie comes out, it's hugely successful. It makes $1.66 million in 1960. That's a lot of money for 1960. So the movie was hugely successful. She doesn't get nominated for an Oscar or any awards, but she got a lot of acclaim for her performance in this movie. In 1961, she plays in the TV series, The Americans, where she plays an Indian. In 1962, she plays the girlfriend of Michael London on the TV show, Bonanza. And I remember the few episodes that she was on. And Bonanza was like a very popular show in the 60s. One of my favorite shows. And, but her career was short lived. She retired from acting in 1963 when she marries Jake Butcher. She gets married and she never acts again after 1963. And she stays married to Jake Butcher for the next 50 years until his death in 2017. Now, throughout their marriage, Jake had problems with legal troubles. He got arrested for bank fraud and served several years in prison. But she stayed behind him through all of those years, all the troubles that he got into. She stayed by her husband and she had four kids throughout their 50 year marriage. 
Today, she's 83 years old. I haven't been able to find any current pictures of what she looks like now, but today she's apparently 83 years old and she's alive and well. And like I said, her husband died in 2017. But she is a biracial woman. One of the things I notice about most biracial people who grew up in the 50s and 60s is most of them would identify as white because it was much easier to live your life as a white person than a black person in the 50s and 60s. But today it's the complete opposite. Most biracial people today identify as black. Even people that only have less than 5% African DNA will identify as black. Because today it's actually more socially acceptable to be black than it is to be white. If you identify as black, you don't have to deal with all this bullshit about recognizing your white privilege. And there's a lot of biracial people that will disown their white side. You see a lot of these people on social media, a lot of these mixed people on social media that will disown their white half of the family. And if one of your parents is white and the other parent is black, you're just as much white as you are black. So when I see a lot of these biracial mixed people on social media talking about how evil white people are and disowning their own heritage, disowning their own family, because it's not cool to be white nowadays. You look at all the hatred, the anti-white hatred that spread on social media. It's not socially acceptable to be white nowadays. This is why you got people that have less than 5% African DNA who are identifying as black. You look at Sean King, for example. Now, Sean King was raised by two white parents. He has two white parents on his birth certificate. And all his brothers and sisters are white. But he, he identifies as a black man even though he's probably less than 20% black. Now he says his, his biological father is a biracial black man who had an affair with his mother. But even if that's true, that would only make him less than what, 20% black, 10% black? If his father is biracial and his mother is white, that would make him less than 20% black. But he still identifies as black and disowns his white side. And you look at some of the anti-white rhetoric that he preaches on social media, it's absolutely ridiculous. He says whiteness is a sin. He says whiteness is a problem in America. And he completely ignores the fact that he's mostly white. He's a man who was raised by two white parents. He's a man who was raised by a white family. And this is what I'm saying. It's more socially acceptable to be black than it is to be white. You look at Barack Obama, for example. Now, Barack Obama looks more black than he does white, even though he has an African father and a white mother. And he barely knew his father growing up. He was raised by his white mother and her white family. He barely knew his father growing up because his mother and his father divorced when he was only three years old. So he was raised by his white mother's half of the family. But he completely disowns his white half and he identifies as black. He doesn't call himself biracial. He calls himself black. Then you look at women like Rachel Dozov. Rachel Dozov is 100% white with two white parents, but she identifies as black. She became the president of the NAACP in Washington. This woman has made hundreds of thousands of dollars 
pretending to be a pro-black activist. And this is one of the reasons why so many white liberals want to be black so bad. Because any person that goes on social media and pretends to be a black activist, you can make a lot of money from donations. You can make a lot of money selling books. You can make a lot of money doing so many things pretending to be a black activist. And this is exactly what Sean King is doing. It's all about the money. It's all about clout on social media. Now, there's some white liberals who have a lot of white guilt. They have so much white guilt. And they think it's a sin to be white. And I don't think any I don't think any person should hate their own race. I don't care whether you're black or white. Every person should be proud of who they are as a person. Every person should be proud of their race. I don't think you should hate yourself. And I don't like all the anti-white rhetoric that's promoted on social media. And there's some white liberals that have so much white guilt, they think every black person should look at themselves as a victim. And if you, you're a black person that doesn't look at yourself as a victim, they will say you're a token or you're not a real black person. They will say they're more black than you are. This is how insane their white guilt is. So people like Rachel Dolezal are a serious problem. There's a lot of people like her. There's a lot of people that have white guilt. I just want to tell these people it's okay to be white. It's okay to be black. It's okay to be who you are. People need to stop hating their own race and stop trying to identify is somebody you're not. One of the things I respect about Mariah Carey is Mariah Carey calls herself biracial. She's one of the few biracial celebrities that doesn't call herself black. She doesn't call herself black. She doesn't call herself white. She calls herself biracial. And this is the correct term for a person that's biracial. If one of your parents is black and the other parent is white, you're not black or white, you're biracial. That's what you are. So I think a lot of biracial people need to learn from Mariah Carey and be proud of who you are and don't disown one half or the other. It blows me away when I come across a lot of biracial people who will disown their white half of their family just because it's more socially acceptable or it's more hip to be black. It's more hip and cool nowadays to identify as black than identify as white. But we all know 50 years ago, it was the complete opposite. I just think people need to stop this self-hatred. You should judge a person by the content of character and not the color of skin. This is why I was completely against Nick Cannon's comments. Nick Cannon, as you all know, has kids with Uriah Carey. Nick Cannon's kids are biracial. So for him to go on social media and preach all this hatred, calling white people animals, is completely ignorant. And people need to stop defending his ignorant comments. Judge a person by the content of character and not the color of skin. And stop generalizing entire groups. This was the problem I had with Nick Cannon's comments. He was generalizing entire groups of people. This is wrong no matter who does it. And it should be condemned no matter who does it. So when I saw a lot of people on social media defending Nick Cannon, defending his ignorant comments, it goes to show how lost today's generation is. We should speak against bigotry no matter who does it, whether they're black or white. 
I just want to encourage people to stop the hate and stop the divide. A lot of people have different opinions about this topic. Leave a comment, rate, and subscribe.